I'm back. Wow, it has been a minute since I've uploaded a video on this channel. It's actually been since April 14th. It's oh, it's been about three weeks. It has been. And I understand. That's unacceptable. It is. It really is. I took a, a big break because I wasn't motivated, honestly. You know, there's been a lot of other things going on. The NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball starting. Um, there was a lot of, there was the Masters. All this stuff has, has occurred since then. And I just haven't been I've, – I've kept up with college wrestling, but I haven't been motivated to talk about it. Today, I finally am. And there's been two really major, you know, massive news stories in college basketball – um, these last couple of weeks, we'll talk about those two major ones, and then of course, just talk about other random things and a little update on what's going to come. As I only have three more weeks of school, and then it's summertime where I will be making more content. Content, I promise. I know it won't be as much as I was during the season where I was uploading around three times a week, but it will be more than once every couple of weeks. I promise you that. Let's talk about the major stories, and let's talk about the one that broke. I believe on Saturday, and it was Bronny James making his college commitment to the University of Southern California. He's going to be a Trojan next year, and I was a little surprised. I knew he was down to three schools, USC, Ohio State, and Oregon, and I thought he was going to be a Buckeye. I really did. And he chose USC. He wants to stay local. He's probably going to be a one-and-done but it's an interesting decision for Bronny James because of the likes of Isaiah Collier and Boogie Boogie Ellis being back in college basketball. They're going to have guys like Kobe Johnson, Vincent Iw Iwakonku, Wu, Josh Morgan's going to be back. Of course, Boogie Ellis, and then they're they're bringing in Isaiah Collier. They could get Keisha Johnson from San Diego State, right? So. This USC team is going to be on the top of the back 12. They're going to be fighting with a team like Arizona. They're going to be fighting with a team in UCLA. But let's talk about LeBron James. Uh, LeBron James Jr., Bronny James. Let's talk about him. He's a very great player. He's around a 6'2 guard. Uh, amazing just, just distributor, distributor, defender, playmaker with the ball in his hand. He's really improved his jump shot over this last year of high school basketball at Sierra Canyon in Los Angeles. And he's take, he took over a lead role this year for what, what is a school that is usually at the tops of the California ranks. And he showed his versatility and his improvement throughout the year. He really just took on a larger role and was really the lane scorer on that Sierra Canyon squad. And yes, he isn't as big as his, his, his father. He isn't as talented but, man, I really do think he has an NBA future, and it's because of the way he can, you know, dribble the ball, be a lead guard on a team. And now we get to see him in the higher ranks. We get to see him at a Power 5 school. And USC is going to be a team uh, where all the eyes are going to be on him because of Bronny James. Now, will he start? When that bro news broke, I commented on the, the Field 68's post. Will he start? I got some responses saying no. He won't. And I agree. I do not think Bronny James will start day one on this team just because you have the likes of Buggy Ellis, who averaged around 18 points last year and was the best player on the team that almost made the second round of the tournament with a tournament team. And Isaiah Collier, who's number one, number two, um, he's a top – he's a five-star prospect who has been rated, rated as high as number one and some and, and on some platforms still is. That's going to be tough to play. Bronny James, I do think, will play a huge role in this team, and he could make his way into the starting lineup. But it's going to be hard to play two, three shorter guards. Um, I know Bronny can defend, but when you're going against the likes of high-talented college basketball players who've been in this environment for many years, that's going to be tough. And I'm excited to see how he transfers into college basketball. But I do like to pick up for USC. It adds more depth. Um, I think they, they, they could be the best team in the Pac-12 this year. I don't I don't see that being a wild thought. I know Arizona and UCLA will be back. And it, and it does rely on U.S. if UCLA can return Jaime Jaquez or if they can return Tiger Campbell, if they can return a Jalen Clark or a Dem Bona. All those players are huge in UCLA's future and then Arizona, if they can return a guy like Omar Balo, maybe Azulis Tabellas will stay in the draft. It'll be huge. Um, and then they they've snagged Jaden Bradley 
from Alabama, which is a great pickup. They re- replaced Kirk Kreeza. Kylan Boswell, a guy who was around 17 years old in last year in college basketball, if he can make another step for this Arizona Wildcats team, the Pac-12 is going to be very competitive. But USC right now might be at the top of that list because you have now two major guys, in Isaiah Collier and Boogie Ellis. And now Bronny James comes in there for the star power, that the energy that – is going to bring the national news and all the attention to that college show. Can they live up to the hype? We'll see. But USC has been a constant tournament team over these last couple of years. They've done a really good job of making tournaments. Of course, that year they made the uh, – I believe they made the Elite Eight with Evan Mobley. We'll see if they can get back to that um, – you know, that just really that ranks as they did a couple of years ago. The other big news that broke, I believe, last week – was Hunter Dickinson announcing his commitment and his transfer to Kansas. Wow. I was really hoping for Hunter Dickinson to go to Maryland. I wanted Maryland to have the national news, the attention on them. As a guy who grew up in I, – I, I live in the Triangle area. I'm a big ACC guy. And as a guy who remember when their, his early childhood watching Duke-Maryland games – um, Maryland was one of the biggest, um, best teams in the ACC. Then them leaving the Big Ten, you know, I think that really hurt Maryland basketball, and they're trying to recover from that. I would have loved to see them get a guy like Hunter Dickinson who brings the star power. But I will say this pick for Kansas is huge. This puts them at the top of the college basketball ranks and gives them a chance to be the number one ranked team in the nation. They're returning DeWan Harris, one of the best pure point guards in all of college basketball. K.J. Adams now, who played the undersized five last year, which was a little challenge for Kansas in handling bigs. Now he can slide to the four. Hunter Rickinson, I think he's going to progress his game and learn to get be a better shooter, and which he did show at the end of last year. So he can stretch the floor. K.J. Adams isn't a great shooter, but now playing the four, he, he's, he won't be you know the guy who has to get, guard their big man or have to get all these rebounds. He has a guy like Hunter Dickinson now that can – help relieve all that pressure off him. They're going to get more guys. They got Nick Timberlake, Townsend transfer, who I think is going to be a stud for um, Kansas. He's a good shooter. They got guys. They could have Kevin McCullough returning. I don't think he will, but he could return. They're they're a team that I do think has a lot of chances to um, take the step, and Kansas is always going to be in it be in the top of the discussion is because it's Kansas basketball. They're most con- they're the most consistent college team every year. You know they're going to be good. They also picked up a guy like Arterio Morris from Texas, who was a freshman last year. He was, a, I believe, a five-star prospect. I think he's going to be able to take a step and be that backup guard for them. They picked up just really good players. And you got, of course, some freshmen coming in. I know Michael Adams Jr. is a beast. I think he won the MVP at the Balls Life All-American game. So I do think he could be, be an impact player. We'll see if they can. You know, they did lose a lot of players. They lost yes, They've lost Bobby uh, Pettifort. They've lost MJ Rice. They've lost some guys off the bench. You're still going to have Uday uh, as the backup big. So I, I love Kansas going the next year. And it's Kansas basketball. What do you expect? They're going to be at the top of the ratings, um, on top of the rankings all all year and going into next year they will be and Bill Self is going to have a, another team that can compete. Let's just talk about some smaller news. Boo Boo is returning to Northwestern. It's really good to see um, leading them to a uh, second round appearance this year. Let's see if they can they can do it again. Again, one of the best point guards in all the nation. Boo Boo is returning to Northwestern. Really good to see. Texas gets Mac A. Smiths after Ron Holland decommits, and that is very interesting. Ron Holland decommitting is a big story. He's some places he's ranked one, two. He's usually in the top three, top five area in the national rankings for 2023, and he was supposed to go to Texas. Decommitted, I think, around the same time that Max A. Smith commits to Texas. He's rumored to be an Arkansas guy. I could see him being a Kansas guy. And if he can go to Arkansas, who has been just the team that's got all the players in this portal, if he can go there and be that five-star leader, I mean, I love his game. He can play the small forward. He's tall, lengthy, shoots the ball, real athletic guy. And Texas would have loved him. 
He's saying he could still return to Texas, but I don't see that happening. You don't decommit and go back to the same original school. Just doesn't make a lot of sense. But Texas is going to him. I like this Max A. Smith and Tyrese Hunter backcourt. Dylan DeSue returning, but they've lost a lot of guys. Sir Jabari Rice, Marcus Carr, Timmy Allen, Christian Bishop. These guys leaving last year's team were all huge parts of it. They're keeping Brock Cunningham for a sixth year. Dylan DeSue is back who was a huge player in March Madness this year. Texas, again, the Big 12 is not an easy conference, especially with Houston coming in here next year. Kansas looking really good. Baylor's going to be really good. Um, they're getting a beast five-star player, Jacoby Walters, who I think is going to be amazing. Of course, they've lost LJ Cryer to Houston, but I still do believe that Baylor's going to be back on the top, uh, top of the Big 12. Texas, you know, I don't think this team is as strong as um, – this current this last year's team, but I do think they could, you know, um compete in the Big Twelve with also the addition of Caden Cedric. We'll see if he starts alongside Dylan Sue. These are two nine shooters. As a Virginia fan, um Caden Cedric was a guy who I think was underrated. We saw in that last game um against Furman, he was really the best might have been the best player on the court. He wasn't uh, a gr- he's a great shot blocker. He can dunk the ball, and he's a big energy guy. Of course, when you play in Tony Bennett's system, you have to be able to defend, and he does that very well. And I'm I'm happy for him going to Texas because he's going to get a bigger role. And we saw that he was a little undervalued at Virginia. I think he's going to be very serviceable for um, the Longhorns. We had Xavier Johnson coming back to Indiana. Indiana looking good. And if Indiana could pick up Mackenzie McBacco, who announced his decommitment to Duke as Kyle Flipkowski was returning. Now that would be huge for Indiana, adding a five-star top 10 prospect and getting Xavier Johnson back. Zach Freemales returning to Xavier. The Big East, man. What can I say about the Big East besides them looking like the best conference in college basketball? They add their Xavier's returning Zach Freemales. And he was a beast. He got injured in the last year. The Big 12 is looking good. We'll see what Adama Sanoga decides. UConn has a lot of pending decisions from their players from this past team. That could really impact next season, um, like Andre Jackson, Adama Sanogo. Um, Klingens announced he has returned. But guys like that, I mean, both those players were, were two of the best players on the whole team. They're returning Tristan Newton. Jordan Hawkins is leaving. But a UConn will be back, of course. Ryan Nemhart, I do not know if I talked about this. Did I talk about Ryan Nemhart going to bait Gonzaga? I don't even know if I did, but if I didn't, huge pickup for the Zags. He's fallen after his brother um, going to Gonzaga. Big loss for Arizona. We thought he was going to go play for Tommy Lloyd in um, Arizona because Tommy Lloyd tried to recruit Ryan Nemhart. He really recruited Andrew Nemhart there. But he goes to Gonzaga. Filling in that lost guard, Timmy, I'm almost 99% sure Timmy is leaving. But I do like this, you know, decision by Nemhar going to be one of the best players on a prominent team. He was going to be a top three, top four seed in this year's tournament. I I do, and I don't know what the, the max potential for this Gonzaga team is. It's not as strong as years prior, but I do know they're still going to be a really good team. They also snagged Graham E.K. from Wyoming, who was out this whole year with an injury, and Steel Venters from Eastern Washington. <laughs> so pickups like that is really going to help. You still have a lot of serviceable players from this year, but losing Strother, losing Timmy is going to hurt. Hunter Salas did leave too. I can't remember where Hunter Salas went. He might have went to like N- NC State or something. I don't know. MJ Rice went to NC State, which is a really good pickup for them. So, yeah, I'm going to go find more news and come talk about it, but I'll be right back in the break. All right, let's go through rapid fire news. I'm just going to John Rossing's Twitter page, and whenever he's saying, I'm just going to be like, I'll react to it. The, uh, the 2023 Charleston Classic Fields announced it was Houston. He's going to be good next year. Houston, LSU, who probably won't be that good this year, next year. St. John's, they've had a lot of interesting players in the portal. Can they compete in the Big East? Probably not under year one under Rick Patino. But I do like their future. I think they will be good in a couple years. But this year is going to be tough with teams like UConn, Nova, Creighton, um, 
Xavier. I know I'm forgetting one really good team in there, but uh, you know who I'm forgetting. Big East is a stacked conference. And every and Marquette. Marquette was a team I'm forgetting. Marquette. Utah. Eh. Dayton. Eh. Townsend. Oh, God. Was my microphone unplugged the whole time? If it was, I'm sorry. Townsend. Eh. North Texas. Eh. Sorry, but that's a lot of eh. That is a lot of eh. I'm going through... These lists, he has a lot of, eh, St. John's picks up a UMass transfer. Meh. Miami, I think, is going to be really good. Of course, they do add Matthew Cleveland to um them. I think that was yesterday that was announced, and that's a really big pickup for Miami. Cleveland was a great player for these bad Florida State teams for the last couple of years, which is unnormal for the Leonard Hamilton-led Seminoles. But he's hit big shots in the past. He's had multiple buzzer beers. Of course, one against my Virginia Cavaliers in 2022, I think. Not last year, but the season before. He had a huge shot against us. <laughs> and yeah, they're going to have Nigel Pack, Bensley Joseph, Wuga Poplar, Matthew Cleveland, and Matt Norchad Omir. This team is going to compete for the top of the ACC. Um Best believe it. I know they're losing Wong, but Pack and I think he's going to step up and be maybe ACC Player of the Year. But Flipkowski might have something to say about that. But again, a really big pickup for the Hurricanes as they try to compete at the top of the Big Twelve. Joe Girard, uh, the ACC, geez. Um, Joe Girard going to Clemson. Good pickup there for the Tigers. Girard was a good player at Syracuse. He's been there for a while. With Joe, um, with Bayheim, Jim Beheim leaving, Syracuse is going to look a lot different. Clemson gets a good guard. Let's see if they can compete after. Clemson having a weird year last year. It was up at times, down at the end of the year, and ended up not making the tournament. I still think Clemson had a successful year, and we'll see. Um, if their coach, their coach will be on the hot seat this year, and we'll see. Um, how how they can you know return um after a, an up and down year last year of course all this brawny news was big <clears throat> sorry yeah i'm just going through these um news okay i'll be right back i guess i did miss a lot of these smaller transfers like Aaron Estrada going from Hofstra to Alabama that's a good pickup for Bama who's le- losing guy like Jane Bradley Shrada, good guard, can go in and fill that hole. We'll see if he starts. Harris Singer went to UNC. Great pickup for the Tar Heels. They picked up a lot of good guys. They've lost Puff Johnson, but we're returning. They've lost Caleb Love, of course. Pete Nance is leaving. They lost a lot of these smaller guys, but they're keeping Archie Davis and Amano Baycott, adding guys like Harris Ingram, who was the best player at Stanford, going to UNC. I think he's going to be really good. Um, But do I... It's going to be interesting if these guys who are in worse teams, how they come out and play at bigger levels. Because we saw a guy like Pete Nance, who was on a bad team, move up, and they did not play good at a bigger level. I think Harris Ingham, though, who was a four-star prospect coming into college basketball, I think he'll be a re- I think he'll um, adjust very well. Akeem Hart going to Maryland. Uh, Villanova was a big pickup. I thought Villanova had a chance of getting Hunter Dickinson. If they did, I think Villanova would be oh, damn near the favorite to win the Big East. <laughs> But they don't, but I think Villanova will be back and in the tournament next year, which is not – I don't even think that's a big – you know, that's not like a controversial thing. I just think Villanova, you know, down year is understandable with the first year without Jay Wright. I think they're due for um a comeback season. Steven Ashworth goes to Creighton. Um, they return Baylor Shireman. Um, they lost Andrew Nemhart, but Ashworth can lead be, now be the lead guard in this team. We'll see if Trey Alexander comes back, Arthur Kalumu, Ryan Colburn. These are all big decisions affecting Creighton, just like, um, just like um UConn is experiencing now. But Creighton picking them Ashworth from Utah State will be huge. We're going through this list. Any new ones there? They also picked up Isaac Trout from Virginia, good shooter. He could really. We still have Olivia and Aquamu. Um, he's on the side of where he's going. So yeah, I mean, college basketball. There's never a dull point anymore, which is always fun. You 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 don't 
it, it's interesting because you just don't know. Like Adam Flanagan, he he's um he's a guy who could go somewhere. I'm looking at the recent ones now. Who there's a lot of undecided ones. Lance Ware put his name in the portal. A guy who was um played some minutes at Kentucky. Just going through this list of guys who've entered the portal from bigger schools. Sorry, 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 sorry. J. Paul. I actually really like this guy's game, J. Powell from Campbell. Watching their games in that um in the their conference tournament, this dude can play at a higher level. I do believe so. Uh we had Darian Ford, who was a five star prospect that went with Arkansas, he's in the portal. So guys like this, right? Tanner Holden, a guy from played mint at uh Ohio State. Man, college basketball will never a dull point. So that was my transport update. I want I haven't I've I'm sorry I haven't posted in a while. I'm gonna try to post more. During, when once summer starts, I will start my big series that I'm starting on now. And it will be the sixty the sixty four. I'm not doing the sixty eight team tournament. The best sixty four team college basketball teams in the last ten years. In the last ten years, it's gonna be awesome. Here's how I'm gonna determine this. Every Final Four team in the last 10 years, that's 40 teams, will make it. Then four from 2020 that didn't have a tournament. So that's 24. That's 44 teams. That means 20 more at-large teams will be able to make the this tournament and one team. And we're doing a max of, if you already have three teams that made the Final Four of these last 10 years, you can't have another at-large bid. So that's my rule. If you made three Final Fours, you can't have another at-large team so we can get more variety in teams. So we're going to do four every Final Four team, and the, the seedings will go. The national champions from the last 10 years will be the number one, the one through 10 seeds. Then the national, the runner-ups will be the next, will be 11 through 20. And then the Final Four teams will be the rest. And then the at-large teams will be the lower seeds. And then we're going to simulate these games on the website and see overall who is the best ne- ne- ba- college basketball team over the last decade. That's going to be a super fun series I'm doing this offseason, which is just going to be able to reminisce, look at some of the great players, great teams from back um, in the, and not in the day, but just back in these last couple of years and really just see how we need to appreciate all this talent that comes to the, comes to college basketball and where see um, just, just see if there's a lot of upsets and who will be the end up being the best college basketball team. In the last decade. Thanks for watching this video. I will be posting more, but man, if it's it, it feels good to be it feels good to be back behind the mic and talking to you guys. So peace out. It was your boy Will Dickinson. Thanks for watching.